straight sets over Mira Andrieva. This was a heck of a match, Katie. I mean, you converted all six of your break points. You saved four set points in that second set. What was going through your mind during those moments when you were facing set point in the second? Um, I was honestly so zoned in that I didn't even comprehend that I was facing three set points against me. And I just kept competing, kept putting together points. I felt like even though I found myself down a break, I was having good ideas and unfortunately just not executing. But sometimes that happens, and I'm really glad I was able to execute when it mattered. You did a lot of things really well out there technically today, Katie. But you know, I really thought mentally keeping it together over the course of this two sets against someone who's such a tough competitor was really the best part of it. Do you, do you have a mantra or something that helps you stay in the zone? What's your, what's your mental process like? Um, it honestly changes every day with the quotes, but today yeah. was now or never, so I kept telling myself that. Love that. Yeah, that's big. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, obviously after it was getting towards the end of things, I was like, okay, it's now or never, and coming up with some good shots, and definitely she's a great competitor, so I knew I have to try to outcompete her as well. Katie, yeah. giving us a little what's your code, you know, we yeah, have oh that yeah, over I here. Feel you. Um, Katie, you've been, you've been uh, moving up the rankings. You cracked the top 75 last year, so you're starting to see what it is level to level, as Steve said, second top 50 win this year. What has been the biggest challenge as you continue to rise up the rankings? Um, it's definitely challenging getting used to that every year, the, same, the points that you made last year drop off. So... Um, this year, in the beginning of the year, even though I felt I was playing better than last year, I dropped a lot of points off from Australian Open, so I found myself going down the rankings, even though I felt well with my game. So that's kind of something new for me to get used to, is every year you just focus on building the game, and then your points will come back, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Always, every week, a new opportunity. Yes. And now you're picking up points this week, Katie. And you're from California, up in Walnut Creek. So, so what's this tournament like for you, being able to have family and friends come watch you? It's as close to home as it gets, and I absolutely love it, because my parents took me here probably since I was six. And we went with my brother every year. I was running after autographs. I remember Del Potro one time was like, last autograph, and I was there. And then he saw me, and he signed my autograph. So I'll remember that forever. But I don't think I imagined I would be here when I was like six or seven years old chasing after other pro athletes. Well, you better make sure now there's going to be someone who's trying to get <laughs> your right. eye right. as, you, as you finish yeah. up over here. Listen, part of the beautiful part about being in your position is you get to play all around the world. I know you went to India not too long ago. You made the yeah. semifinals over there in Mumbai. So out of all the places you've been, the different cultures you've gotten to experience, what's what's been maybe your favorite? I love home. Nothing beats home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. So, okay. I, yeah, I really love Palm Springs. I also love Australia. Um, I feel at home there as well. And it was my first time being in Asia, and I was surprised by Thailand. I really enjoyed the culture and the food there. It was so comfortable for me, too. Very cool. Yeah. And you also get to play all of these amazing athletes that you've seen growing up. Your next match is against Ange Jabeur. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of her game, and, and, and how excited are you to get that challenge? Yeah, she's definitely a unique player, and I've watched her for years. So for me, it's a really exciting opportunity and to really see where my level falls. So I will gladly take that opportunity and compete. It's an interesting talking about a player like Ons because she's not exactly a prototypical player. She right. mixes in drop shots, slices, all sorts of different things. So as you prepare for that match, will you just go out and do your own thing or will you have your opponent try to play a little bit like Ons to prepare you? Usually I just stick to the same routines because it involves a little bit of everything. We really like to work on every part of the game. So I think it covers almost anything I'll see because we're not working on just one type of player. We're working on anything that I could possibly see out there. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, listen, uh, if people don't know, you, you went to public school and, mm -hmm. until 11th grade, kind of, you know, worked your way up through juniors and all of that. How did that help you get to where you're at now? I'm honestly really happy that my parents kept me in public school and that my counselors in high school were so nice to me. They let me travel for ITFs when I needed to, um, given that I would complete tests on time and things like that when I come back. 
but this really gave me an edge, I think, on multitasking and time management because I really had to make sure I have everything done so that my schoolwork didn't invade my brain during the <laughs> tennis matches. <laughs> well, it is a pleasure to watch you compete out there. Congratulations once again on that win today. Now or never, Katie. Yeah. Congratulations. Best <laughs> of luck you. going forward. Thank you so much.